Um, and I'm, you know, a lot of the skill of, of what I do is doing something very simple and imagining what it's like to do it in a very complicated scenario. And be, once you become good at that, then you become good at this job. So again, we're going to continue with our sphere. We've now preserved volume, but we're going to add some friction. Okay, so one of these, there's no friction. The sphere just simply slides around. Uh, the second one, there's a little higher friction, and you can tell the sphere drags a little bit, and so on. And there's a bunch more math, um, which is, again, like I said, the, the really fun part. Um, all right, so let's see what we get so far. All right, if you, if you look at that area, you'll see that now uh, his arm goes through his stomach. Right? It, it, just, it just cuts right through as if it wasn't there, and that's not, that's not accurate, that's not physically realistic. Even though this is a talking, walking panda, which doesn't exist in real life, it still has to obey rules about the real world and about real physics. Um, so let's add some self-collision. And, and now we see that his arm just moves a little bit more naturally against his stomach. Um, and, and this animation ends up looking, looking considerably nicer. Um, of course, once you've got these kinds of simple dynamics, and, and particularly on a panda bear, like I said, panda bear has hair all over its body. So now we've got an object like this, the sphere that's, that's responding to collisions, that's maintaining volume, it has some elastic properties. Um, and we can add some hair on it. And we can see that the hair also reacts dynamically against any collision objects. Um, yeah, and, and finally we can go back to looking at Paul. This is our, our final effect. Uh, so he's, he's moving around, you can see he's got this, all this effect turned on. Uh, and he's doing something, again, very simple, but it's, it's better. It's better to have these little things. We spent, you know, probably six weeks trying to figure this stuff out, making, improving these effects, as described in the introduction. You know, my, my story in the film industry be, began in the year 2000. And I went to work for a company called Digital Domain. Um, and I worked not on graphics. I worked on distributed computing. Uh, I worked on some image processing software, which is called NU. Uh, I worked on some device drivers, very low level systems programming. Uh, and then a little bit of animation software. And, and soon I, I was working on more and more of this stuff. And this is my very first fluid effect. Um, it's done for the movie Peter Pan. Um, Play it again. Oh, sorry. It's, it's this crocodile that's going to attack Peter Pan, and um, he's just splashing in the water. And I remember it took at least three of us a, at least a month to, to do this, just one, this, just this one effect, because it was the first time and it was hard, and nobody knew how to do it, and there were a lot of mistakes, and you know, eventually we learned, but it wasn't easy. Um, I'll, I'll show you what the final shot ended up looking like. Um, it's very short. You actually don't see very much of the water. Um, but it turns out you can't use a real crocodile with children. <laughs> um, so, so they had to do it this way. Um, so this is that very first shot. This was my very first fluid effect. And I kept working on this, and things improved, and I improved my methods, my software, my understanding. Um, and some time passed, I think three or four years, and then I got the chance to work on this movie called Pirates of the Caribbean 3, and I'll let you watch that. <laughs> 